Uh, hey YouTube, the video response to a show that sucks who, uh, we've got this conversation going about uh, various uh, Linux distributions and why you choose them, why you use them. Uh, and in his last video he talked about a lot about the average user and, and this is something I want to touch on a little bit. And uh, I admit I'm not the average user. And I think Show That Sucks will also admit that he is not the average user. And and we make operating system choices for different reasons than what someone else might. And uh, when I think of the average user, here's, here's the test I use. And the test I use is, if I were going to build a computer from scratch for my mom, and that's the test I would use. What operating system would I put, would I install on that computer uh, basically to so that I don't have to put up with nightly technical support questions from her? And, uh, and I throw the, uh, and I put the constraint on myself. I know that she's sort of grown up using computers in a Windows world. So, and I don't want to answer Windows questions and I don't want to pay you know, 119 bucks for an OEM license to put on a brand new computer that I would build for. So if I used a free and open source operating system, what OS would I use? And uh, what I would use personally, what I would build on that, what I would install on that theoretical computer is Linux Mint. And the reason why I would use Linux Mint is because it comes out of the box with all the multimedia codecs. It, it comes with a one-stop shop place for all of your system configuration. Uh, it, it's just a, it, and it's a good to look at, well-pleasing operating system. And I would put that on there so that I might not get a tech support question every night from her, but maybe once a week, twice a week, and that's okay because it is and again in my last video I talked about I'm used to Ubuntu I'm used to the GNOME desktop and I'm comfortable playing in that that's I could answer her questions and I could do it over the phone or I could do it over a Skype session and it wouldn't uh, she'd still be able to use a computer for pretty much everything that 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 she uh, that she uses it for now caveat to that you know and, and I don't want to make this a, a, a mint versus a PC Linux OS or an Ubuntu versus PC Linux OS que uh, a debate because I'm really not I'm kind of agnostic as it comes to that I mean it, if you prefer if you prefer the KDE desktop environment and you know show that sucks is absolutely right you know Linux so uh, PC Linux OS is an operating system that is optimized for and it's built from the ground up with that KDE desktop environment in mind in much the same way that Ubuntu is designed and built from the ground up with uh, with GNOME in mind and don't get me wrong I've used Kubuntu it's it's okay as far as it goes but it's not it, it it's an afterthought putting that KDE environment on top of Ubuntu was an afterthought to the it is and it is still an afterthought to the uh, KDE or to the Ubuntu developers uh, in much the same way where you have uh, PC Linux OS where their GNOME version is sort of an afterthought because they built PC Linux OS uh, with uh, with KDE and with KDE in mind as their uh, as their default operating system. Now there's a ton of other distros out there that that have other desktop environments in mind. And a uh, show that sucks is right. You know the two uh, 800 pound gorillas on the street out there are GNOME and KDE. But you also have a, you also have Fluxbox. You also have a XFCE. You have uh, I mean. I, I can't name them all. There's all kinds of great ideas out there as far as how a desktop should look and act uh, or how a GUI should look and act. 
and not all not all of them use the same uh, desktop metaphor that that is so common uh, that you see in in GNOME that you see in De uh, in KDE that you even see in Windows Explorer which is the default desktop for Windows or in uh, uh, in, in the Mac OS Finder or whatever they call uh, their default desktop environment but it's still a desktop metaphor there are other metaphors out there that uh, th that th that have been tried and that are experimental and that other people frankly like and that other people frankly prefer to the desktop metaphor so you know I I, I am not some uh, I've said it before. I'll say it again. I, I'm OS agnostic. I'm even desktop uh, environment ag agnostic. I mean, whatever works for you works for you. And uh, and, and if it, it it's a tool, and if it helps you use your computer the way you want to use it, then hey, I'm a fan. And, you know, I, I don't think anything less of you. Uh, you know, uh, you, you do what works for you, and uh, and and my whole uh, thing about starting this series of videos is, I want to know what works for you. I, I, you know, what works for you? Why? I mean, how do, how, how does your brain work? You know, and you, you know if uh, if you can wrap your head around KDE better than you can around GNOME, then. If that works for you, that's great. That is great. Uh, and and the same for the other desktop environments that are out there. And for this and the same for folks that you know. I mean, there there's still some people out there that swear by the command line, and and uh, and do everything, and do everything from a shell environment. Uh, there's still those those folks out there and. You know, I've got, I got nothing against them as well. You know, if that's, if that's the way you rock, that's the way you rock. You know, so anyway, but going back to my original point, if I were building a computer for my for my mom from scratch, and I was going to throw a Linux distro on it, now I wouldn't even put U Ubuntu on it because uh, I'd have to take too much time uh, installing multimedia codecs and, and all the other stuff that Ubuntu does not have out of the box. You know, if I were just going to throw a distro on it, you know, install it and forget it, uh, it'd be Linux Mint. And, and that's what I would do. So, anyway, uh, that's my two cents worth. Thanks for watching.